Okay, that's too summer for fun. In the past, I have a video on the fake product rule for derivative. So today, why don't we try to fake the product rule for integrals as well? That means I want to have two functions so that the integral of f times g to be the integral of f times the integral of g. Of course, we want f and g to be non-constants because otherwise it would be too boring. And if you were like, you can challenge yourself, try to figure out general formula f based on g or g based on f pretty much the same thing. But let me tell you, it will be pretty bizarre. So this is how I will do it. I'm just going to select a specific function for f. And then I'll try to figure out what g should be to correspond that. And yeah. And as I said, you can do some hardcore stuff. But I will just show you guys that this situation will actually work for some specific functions. Of course, this doesn't work all the time for all the f and g, right? But for some functions, it actually works. Anyway, I'm going to say I will pick f to be just x and then we'll figure out a function for g, right? So here we go. I want x to be f. So we are looking at the integral of x times g dx. This is just one integral. And on the right hand side, we have the integral f is my x now. And we want to multiply by the integral of g, we'll figure out what g shall be. And right here you see we have three integrals and g is in the integral. Therefore, of course, we have to get rid of the integral. To do so, it's okay, not that bad. We can just differentiate it because the derivative and the integral, they cancel each other out. So here, differentiating this integral, we pretty much just get x times g. And this is equal to, by the way, you don't have to put on the plus c. This is just differentiation. Here though, we have to use the product rule. So we are going to keep the first function, the integral of x dx, and I will multiply by the derivative of the second. Derivative and this integral cancel, so we just get a g right here. And then we add it with the second function, which is the integral of g of g times dx like this. And we multiply by the derivative of this, which is just an x like that. So this is pretty much it. Now, we are going to do a few things. Because I already chose f to be x. So we have this. So I can easily figure out what this is. And on the left hand side, we have x times g. This right here is just one half x squared. But let me write down the g first. And as I said, this is just one half x squared. And for this, I will just put down the x first. And this integral, g function dx like this. And from here, of course, we can just divide everything by x because they happen to be just like every term has the x. So let's do that. So here, we just have the function g. And here, we will get 1 half x squared over x is just x. And then the g, of course, is right here. And by the way, I should do this just to be cute, all that stuff. Anyway, here, we get the integral of g dx like that. Like the good old days in algebra class, right? Anyway, that's what we have. Well, instead of three integrals, now we just have one. We still have to get rid of this integral, isn't it? So of course, we can just differentiate. But perhaps I will just move this to the other side first. If you would like, I will. So we get, actually, it doesn't really matter. Let's just differentiate this right here. On the left hand side, we get the derivative of g. And I will just write it as g prime. Here, this is the product of two functions again. So I will keep the first function, which is 1 half x times the derivative of the second, which is g prime. And then we will add the second function times the derivative of this, which is just 1 half. And then we add the derivative of this, which is just a g function like that. So this is what we have. Pretty good. We don't have integrals anymore, but we end up with derivatives. We end up with a differential equation, actually. But it's OK, we can handle it. On the right hand side, this part, we can combine it. And I will move this to the other side. So let me do that. And I will also have to factor out the g prime. So we see this is 1. And let me open the parentheses first. We have 1. And once we brought this to the other side, it becomes negative. So we have the minus 1 half x. And I will factor out the g prime and put it at the end like this. So that's what we have. And this is going to stay on the right hand side. And that's equal to 
one half g plus one g, you can just add the fractions, so you get three half g like this. And in fact, this is a separable differential equation. Perhaps I would prefer to write the g prime as d g over d x. And now you already see that this is indeed separable. To do so, let's see. I'm going to keep the dg on this side because it's on numerator. I want to bring the dx to the other side. So let me see. I will multiply dx on both sides, right? But this part has the x. I will have to bring this to the other side. I will have to divide this quantity. So I will just put this down as 1 over. This is 1 minus 1 half x. So I took care of these two parts. And because this is just a constant multiple, let me just write it as 3 over 2 right here. But I don't want to have the g on the right-hand side, though. I'm actually going to divide the g to the other side. And don't forget the dg was on the left-hand side already. And once we divide the g on both sides, we have 1 over g like this. And that's pretty much it. And preferred, probably I will get rid of the complex fraction, because this right here, I can just multiply this out. So if you would like, you can look at this right here as 3 on the top over 2 minus 2 times this is just minus x, like this, dx. And of course, we still have the 1 over g, dg. Now, this is great because I can integrate both sides. We separate the variables and we can integrate here and here. And let's see. Oh, I messed up my arrow, but it's okay. On the left-hand side, we get the ln absolute value of g. And I'm not going to worry about the plus c, because I just want to find a g function that will make this work. So I'm just going to pick the easiest solution. I will say all the constants are zero. <laughs> so don't worry about the constants. And this is equal to, when we integrate this, let me write down the three first, because that's a constant multiple. and when you integrate 1, because I factored the 3 already, 1 over, this is a linear function, so we get ln absolute value of the denominator, which is 2 minus x. But the derivative of the bottom, the derivative of 2 minus x, is negative 1. Therefore, we have to divide it by negative 1, which is the same as multiplied by a negative right here. And once again, don't worry about the constants. We just want to have a g function now to make this work. And in fact, I will make this super easy. <laughs> this is negative 3 in front of the ln. I can bring this to the top right here. And we are saying this is ln absolute value of g equals to ln absolute value of parentheses with 2 minus x inside raised to the negative 3 power like this. To pick the easiest solution from here, I will just say I will pick g to be just this, namely 1 over 2 minus x, and then to the third power, without any constants whatsoever. This right here will be my g function. So here is my claim. I'll do this in blue now. We have the integral of x times g right here, which is the integral, and x times this, I will just put the x on the top over this, right? So 2 minus x to the third power like that, well, we are saying this right here will be the integral of x. And you close this integral, but you multiply by another integral, namely the integral of just this, 1 over 2 minus x to the third power, like that. However, though, they might be off by a constant. So let me show you guys what I mean by that. So here is the check. And right here, just go ahead and integrate this whichever way that you want. You can do it by u sub, we can do it one fourth from alpha, up to you. But let me tell you, the answer to this right here will be x minus 1 over parentheses 2 minus x to the second power. And you don't have to worry about the plus c. You can just put on plus c on one of the sides, that's all. Prefer body on the right-hand side, sometimes, I would say. So that's pretty much what I want to tell you. This right here is going to be x squared over 2 when you just integrate that. And when you just integrate this, once again, do some use up whatever you want. You end up with 1 over 2 times 2 minus x to the second power like this. And here's the deal. 
because we are still integrating, we have to put a plus C. And as I said, just put it on one of the sides right here. And now the question is, what is C right here? I'll tell you. Multiply everything by 2 minus x to the second power. When you do this times that, you get x minus 1, and that's equal to this times that. Well, of course, they cancel, and you will have x squared over 4, and you will just say plus, and we have c times that. So I'll just put on c times. Of course, you will have c and x. This is what you can do. You can just pick some value for x. I'll say x is equal to, I cannot do 2. Because if I do two, then I kill this turn and I have no C. So I have to pick something else. So I'll say pick X is equal to zero. So you see right here we yeah. get, and you see this is negative one, this is zero. And this is pretty much four and C like this. So in another word, we are saying C is equal to negative one over four. And I can tell you this right here is true, but if you integrate it, well, the answer right here is just off by negative 1 over 4. So that's pretty much it. And you guys can leave a comment down below, let me know what kind of the g function do you come up with, or maybe you can come up with another pair for the solution that satisfy this right here. But anyway, hopefully you guys all like this video, and if you're new, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much.